Hi everybody, this is Endocrine and I want to show you how to do a good card UI today. We will do this by making a base class called card and some subclasses. We will only look at card data and card UI today, but stay posted for future tutorials for the rest of the stuff you need for a card game. Let's get started. All right, we will start with the prefab for a typical card. I have a package with all the art I used in this. I made it myself. You can use it for free and download it from my itch.io page. I use a canvas UI based base system for handling my cards. So I'm making a card canvas and so that the prefab, which will be the card, is in the rect transform category. It's just easier to do it that way. And I will uh, now construct a few images that will comprise the card, which we will be able to change dynamically later on. So let's have a look. I'm actually gonna add a few different elements. My cards will have a different card type. They will have different elements and they will have different rarities and all of this will be visually represented so let's just move on until i have finished building the prefab you can pause the video at any point and build the prefab yourself or you can download the project from my hio page as well Okay, now that the prefab is finished, let's have a look at the scripts that we need. I already made a folder down here um, that is called scripts and I made a subfolder called cards. You can do that, you can skip that, it's up to you. And we will start with the card script, which will be pretty bare bones in this tutorial, but we still need it for later stuff. Um, so just bear with me here. Um, it's a typical mono behavior and let's just type it out for a moment. So basically this will be the hub of all what makes a card. What I exactly mean with that you will understand later, but every time we want the different scripts that um, handle a card to communicate with each other, we will do so by referencing this class most of the time. I usually like to structure my scripts in the way you see now. I make a region for the fields and properties and I make a region for the methods in the class. Again, you can do this, you cannot do this, it doesn't really matter, it's just how like I like to do things. And for this tutorial we will just need a cryptuple card in here which will be a scriptable object. So let's just make a new script for that. We don't even need to go into that for now. We will just um, make it so we can reference it in the card script. But we will have a look into it later. I personally like to work with properties. You can just do this with um, public fields or variables as well, um, like I see in most tutorials, but I do like to constrict the access to my variables or add to my properties as much as possible so I don't accidentally change anything.
Okay, now to the meat of this tutorial, the card UI. We have a lot of different stuff that needs to be filled out in the card. And for that, we will have our own script, the card UI, which will basically update everything that is to appear on the card. Let's switch back to the card script for a moment. Now that we have made the card UI script and add a short require component on top of this, this will um, automatically add the card UI script to every object that has the card script attached to it as well. So you don't have to worry about um, adding everything individually. We will only have one single card prefab, so it's not that big of a deal to do it manually, but um, I just like to do it that way. Okay, let's get going on the card UI. Again, I will type down the script for a moment as far as we can go, and then we will talk about it. Let's add a using statement on the top here for the Unity UI and we will also need the TMP Pro. If you're using, uh, you're using TMP Pro the first time in your project, you will get a um, short pop-up usually where you need to import the essentials. Just click OK in that case. Yeah, I just realized I forgot to make the prefab. Actually, so for to make it the prefab, you just drag it down here into the assets. I have a folder prefabs for this as well. And from now on, we will just work in the prefab, not in the scene itself. Okay, so basically we will reference several different objects um, that make up our card in the prefab which is the card image, the element background and the rarity background we will use. We will need the play cost. What I mean by that is how much the card costs to be played. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but still. Uh, the card name, the card type and the card description. And for the next segment here, we will have um, sprite assets that will be referenced, uh, which will be the actual sprites the script will use for the elements and the rarities because we want different sprites for different elements and for different rarities and we want different images for each card as well right well a different image for each card so for this tutorial um our cards will have fire ice and lightning elements or just basic elements so basically not no element and we will have basic, common, rare, epic and legendary rarities which will be visible on the card as well. And now because I'm kind of a stickler <laughs> sometimes we will define the effect types here. Uh, well the strings for the effect types to be used later on instead of hard coding them into the code itself. So that if we want to change this later on, we just need to change it here at the top and not have to look down into the code uh, where to change it. All right. Now that we have that settled, let's go for the methods we need. And we will need a method that will update how the UI looks depending on what data the card has. We will do this in awake and we will do this in on validate. Awake will be called, as most of you probably know, when the uh, object is starting in the scene. And on validate is not that commonly used, I think. It will always update when the editor, I think it's the editor or the inspector, is refreshed. And uh, that will give us the ability to look at our changes already in the editor without having to press the start button. And we will just do this by calling awake in on validate so that we don't have to write the same method body twice. And in awake we will get the uh, card first because we need to reference the card for the card data later on and then we will set the card UI. But at the moment this will be pretty hard because we don't know yet. We, we don't have a data. The card doesn't have the data yet, right? 
we don't know do not know how the card image looks what rarity the card has and so on and this is something we will do in a few moments here and we'll have a look at the card at the scriptable card class because that is the one that will do all of this for us So let's switch into the scriptable card and define the data that will make up a card or that a card will hold. And for that we will not use a mono behavior class, we will use a scriptable object. For those that don't know what a scriptable object is, in very short terms it's a it's basically a, a baby mono behavior that just doesn't have a lot of the junk mono behavior carries with it and is just a data container which is exactly what we need here and we can easily make many instances of that in our asset folder and for that we will need this header here the create uh, this attribute create asset menu which will allow us to um, create a lot of them quickly later on just by right clicking in the editor again i like to use properties and that's why we need the field addition to the serials serialize field attribute because otherwise properties will not show up in the editor in the inspector i mean text area makes a the uh, the attribute text area makes a area that you can put text in in the inspector it's just a uh, basically bigger than the usual string input field okay now we also want to give our cards our own data types basically not really data types but we want to give the cards a an element a rarity and what was the last one i'm blanking right now anyways i always like to use enums for this you can if you um, reveal them to the inspector you can just use them as a drop down later on and select what kind of element effect type or rarity your card has All right, so this scriptable card will be referenced by our card as card data. And now we can use this card data to reference all of the different things we need for our card UI. So let's type this in. Play cost is an integer, so we need to add a two string method, right? Right, for the effect type and the rarity, it's basically the same thing. We have a um, image that represents our effect. Well, sorry, not the effect type. This is well for the effect type. We will use a different string. The strings we defined at the top, depending on what effect type the card has. And I like to do this by using switches. There was one in the enum that's not supposed to be there. All right, let's just first um, call these methods here. Um, we will check if the card is null and if the card is null, um, we will also check whether the card has already, already has a card data um, because we will call this in the inspector, right? So if we haven't assigned a card data yet to a card, it will throw errors, which is annoying. <laughs> so we will check whether the card data is already present. All right, now for the element and the rarity. For each the rarity and the element, we have an image assigned from the prefab. And we will just set the images sprite to the sprite we selected out of our assets so that it will switch the assets according to the data we have given the card and then we will call those function and set card functions in set card ui as well and the last thing that is missing will be the or is the set well to set the card's image which will also be included into the 
a card data since this image will usually be different for every card type and for every card. And with that, we should have all the code we need. Now let's see if it works. For that, our prefab first needs the card script, which will automatically attach the card UI script, remember? And then we need to assign all the different um, fields properties rather just drag and drop them right in there I just realized that um, I made a small mistake in coding because I want to have the um, gray border for the basic rarity um, which I don't have a sprite for because it's part of the original card. <laughs> Could be done better if you wanted to make it more modular. But we will just use a small fix in the script to handle this. And instead of doing nothing, uh, we will just um, turn off the image. Disable the image so it will be translucent. So no problem. All right, now the last piece missing is the card data. So we will make a, a new scriptable object, which as I said, can be done just by clicking right with the right mouse button into your asset folder. And we will make uh, the divination card, let's say. And the card name for that will be divination. And the card description, let's see. Mm. Something like this. <laughs> let's set the cost to one and the image is the image that's actually in the preview, which is probably not the best way to show it off right now, but uh, it's fine, you will see the changes anyways. And let's pick element rarity. Let's go epic. All right. Now we just need to drag this into the card prefab, which we will later done at runtime, obviously, not in the inspector. And if we just reopen it, it will have adjusted. So new card frame, you have the text in there, you have the type in there. And yeah, basically this is the construct how to make cards. Later on we will add this, uh, we will make a lot more scriptable cards and we will add the scriptable objects at runtime whenever we, we instantiate a new card. Um, but we can preview all of this in the inspector right like we did right now So I hope that it was helpful to you If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I will try my best to answer them and I will keep working on the next instances of this tutorial series at the end of which I want to um, have a finished deck with a Discord pile, which will probably the ne be the next tutorial. Like instancing cards and having a deck you can draw cards from and having a Discord pile to put cards into. And then we will give the cards effects and movement in a last tutorial. I don't know if that will be one or two tutorials, we will see. 
probably too the card movement is quite a lot so that we have a hand that can be seen and you can shuffle cards around and stuff alrighty so till next time <laughs>